Let's talk about the scroll compressor. The scroll compressor is one of the more, I want to say, newer versions that are out on the market. Uh, hopefully, as you've read in your homework and watched the other uh, videos and played with your My HVAC Lab paperwork, um, you'll have a clear understanding when you actually get your hands start getting hands dirty on this stuff. So again, if you don't have this, you're already cheating yourself because this is your Bible and you need to have it. All right? So be sure you have that and you've read it. The other thing is, and, and be sure you bring all that stuff out with you when you go, uh, you come out here in the lab because you can use it to uh, assist you. Now, a scroll compressor there can be one in a unit, or there may be two in a unit. It may be a smaller scroll, such as <clears throat> they use them in uh, window units, all right, for your air conditioning systems. They also use what is known as a rotary, and we'll, we'll talk about that. But these are very high efficiency type uh, compressors. Now, as you can tell, we, this is a cutaway. Everything we have is a cutaway. And you can take this apart, but be very careful that when you take it apart, you put all the parts back in. Um, and be very careful because this isn't light. So the top has been cut off. And I'm going to show you that, of course, we already know that red is the high side. And then up on top, where the piece is missing, there used to be a, uh, for an, a safety uh, device. So if the high side got too hot or the pressure got too hot or high, it would pop this and close off the circuit or open up the circuit actually. All right? As you can see on the underside, this, this little thermostat is what we're talking about and it has two leads to it. And if this popped, then it would take out the electrical and shut the compressor off and hopefully save it. So we're going to just uh, let that go. Now when you use this, be sure that we try to, especially on this type of uh, surface we have here, try to use the paper just to protect this. <clears throat> so be sure that you use the paper to try to protect the, the tabletop surface. Now. Everything that's white is typically just, you know, neutral, let's just say, all right? And if you follow along with your book, you'll have an, a better understanding of what's being asked of you here, all right? And what I suggest is that you just lay them off to the side. And the screws that I'm actually undoing right now are holding the whole mechanism together. What we're going to do is, when we take this off, that allows us to take off the lid. Now, low side electric, electrical connections, all right? You got your common start and run winding. All right, we'll talk about that later. Right now, all we're worried about is the compressor itself. Here is the low side. So you, by now, you should already memorize low pressure, low temperature, superheated gas going into the low side. If you notice, right here, it's painted blue. All right, that blue will allow the refrigerant to come into the the can, the sealed can, and as you take this top off, you will see you will see how we painted it, all right, that the blue, all right, will go in there as a low pressure, low temperature superheated gas. Now, as this rotates and it only rotates 
like it doesn't even rotate in a full circle. It rotates in kind of an egg shape, and you'll see why in a minute. But as that does that, you'll notice that these are machined very tight, and as it keeps coming back and forth, all right, in this semi-circle, or not a semi-circle, an egg-shaped circle, all right, it tightens the refrigerant because those two pieces of metal are squeezing from a wider area being open to a very tiny, very tight operation, which is going to raise the pressure to a high pressure, high temperature superheated gas. Now, knowing that, you'll notice that in here, you'll notice in here, as it comes into the low side, it, there's this little baffle that stops it and shoots it up, which again, where you saw the blue on the compressor head there, all right, that's where it's going to go in. But now you're going to see that in the center of this compressor, it's called an eccentric, meaning that it isn't dead center. It's off to one side, which causes the motor to move this slide lever back and forth. Now, remember I was telling you it was in the egg-shaped egg motion? Well, that's what I'm talking about, because it doesn't go in a complete 360. It just keeps going back and forth in an egg shape. And when that's doing that, that's what's moving That's what's moving this. Now, this, this top portion of your compressor is stationary. This isn't moving, all right? It's coming in as a low pressure, and it's coming out as a high pressure, all right? What's moving is this scroll portion. And because, you know, you just can't get it to move without a little uh, heavy duty power, just imagine that because it's eccentric, it's offsetting it, and it's going in an egg-shaped motion. And as that does that, you can see where the um, refrigerant will coil up into the center, and as that motion is happening, it tightens and raises the pressure on the compressor. All right? Now, that's as really as far as you really need to take this, all right? because the only thing underneath this is an electric motor, all right? An electric motor has what? Two major parts, a rotor and a stator. And that's all connected electrically, and we will discuss that in the later uh, situations. So, understand, when you take this apart, all right, please remember to put it back correctly, all right? If you just set this back on top, now we don't want anything tightened down forever, all right? But be sure that you're able to explain to the instructor how this works. And you will have to take the top off so that you can explain that in detail to them so that they fully understand that you understand what is being asked of you in this session. Now, Remember, low pressure, low temperature, superheated gas comes in. As it gets compressed, and it only gets compressed in this little portion of the compressor, it will come out as a high pressure, high temperature, superheated gas. That's how all compressors work, period. Now, of course, at the bottom of this is oil, refrigerant oil, and that refrigerant oil, of course, has to match whatever refrigerant you're working with at the time. So you can't put R22 refrigerant into a system with 410A type oil. And um, you know, you, you can't cross contaminate. So be very careful what you're doing, how you're working it, 
and understand everything that you need to to be able to explain to your customer why their compressor isn't working. All right? It's either electrical problem or it's mechanical problem. Typically, it will always be the, uh, the electrical, but be very careful when this is under pressure that if you're checking the electrical, never check it at this point. Because if it's a short and you cross the wires on that and get an electrical spark, it will blow out the refrigerant to you. All right? So just a safety caution on that. Hopefully, you're taking enough uh, understanding of this and the notes and reading your uh, books to understand how this is working. It isn't that difficult, all right? But it does take some um, knowledge to understand how all this system works. But there is absolutely no difference that a compressor is the heart of the system and it takes that low pressure, low temperature, superheated gas and it compresses it to a high pressure, high temperature, superheated gas. They all do it. The only difference is how they go about doing it.